Hi guys, welcome to Winsome Cottage Garden. My name is Hannah and I'm so glad that you decided to join me today. It is an absolutely glorious day here at the cottage. We're in West Michigan, a little bit north uh, where my parents live. I call it the cottage because it used to be our family cottage, uh, but now they've retired up here and it's time for our June garden tour. The June garden tour is honestly one of my favorite tours to do all year because there's just a lot blooming right now and it's looking absolutely stunning. And I can't wait to share it with you guys. I wanted to take a moment to appreciate things. We've got some Bridal Veil Spirea in full bloom. We've got our Miss Kim Standard is blooming and our Miss Kim Lilacs are gonna be not far behind. And there are a couple of other things that are just beginning to peter out that I wanted to catch in this tour before they're done for the season. I, we've got a series of videos that you actually won't see until next week after this video that I've filmed this past week in the city where it has been extremely hot, unseasonably so, like more like August temperatures, where we've had the actual temperatures in the low 90s with the heat index higher, like 97, and it has just sapped a lot of the joy out of the spring season, not just in energy, but also blooms, like not lasting any time at all, because it they when it's warm, it forces things to bloom a little early and it makes it so short. The cottage has been a little bit insulated from that because we're a little bit further north. We're closer to the Lake Michigan Lake Shore, which provides a little bit of a tempering effect. So things are just looking stunning. The first bed that I'd like to walk you through is the one right behind me near our front door. I'm actually gonna start with this kind of backed up view to show you guys how our pots are looking. They are looking so, so good. We planted these uh, like a week before Mother's Day this year. And the ranunculus is getting a little sad, but you can see that the pansies and violas are still just killing it, honestly. Our beautiful Decentra Bleeding Heart is doing really well. And I actually have this, uh, what is this called, pewter? Oh, I can't remember the real name. We just call it pewter. Um, we have a six pack in here that I'm actually gonna pop in this area because I think that foliage differential would be pretty just to kind of pop around and see how it does there did want to pop over here and show you this container really quickly. We planted it up in a recent video and by the time I finished watering everything in, this area was pitch black. So I didn't get a chance to show you. You can see that it probably needs a tiny bit of grooming, which I'll just do right now. Uh, and seed is still dropping like crazy. You can see on the ground we've got so many tree seeds that we'll wait till they kind of end a little bit more and come and pick it out. But this is a really pretty mix of things and provides some vertical interest in this area, which is a little bit of a dead space, especially when they reach their full height. it will be like this nice, full, round foliage interest. Okay, popping over to this bed, you can see that the ferns are just looking so full and lush this year. I'm absolutely loving it. I also am loving the hookerella that we added uh, in this area. I don't remember the variety name. I'll see if I can look it up. But that differentiation of the foliage here is really giving me life. I haven't really started blooming quite yet, but you can see they're putting up bloom stalks, so they're going to be quite a shell. This rhododendron normally would be blooming right now. I don't know if you see it hasn't started yet, but it only has one itty bitty flower which is actually quite disappointing. So we're gonna make sure that we fertilize it really well and give it all the things it needs and hopefully it will put on a better show next year because we are expecting it to do a little bit better. But our still be here are also doing really well. Our hoster coming in back, a forget-me-not little cluster that we try to keep right underneath here, but they do creep. And to be honest, this is still looking really beautiful. But when they are in full bloom, I think I had a picture of them from our last garden tour. They are just so, so stunning. So it's really pretty also with the hookerella, the differentiation. Our incredible hydrangeas are doing really well. You can see they already have some buds kind of beginning to form like here and here. So I'm glad we're gonna get a show. We've also put our garden ornaments out or at least started. This walkway is one of my favorite at the cottage and is beginning to put on quite a show. First we have this Sonic Bloom Wygelia, which to be honest, it seems to have a lot of dead 
in the middle. Now we're not quite dead, but not a lot of leaves, not a lot of flowers. Not quite sure why, potentially it got a little wind blown this um, winter. But from this side, you can see that the beautiful red down below is doing really well. Maybe we need to pop a wind barrier or something up this winter. Not really sure what is going on. It looks like there are some like buds, but what's the beautiful thing is these blooms that are now coming up. Right next to them, we have some really, really pretty iris. These have been here a while. Don't know what the variety is, but they're really beautiful and like a nice warmer purple. Uh, our Buckeye has a couple blooms on it that are just going out of, going out. But we also have this glorious iris I wanted to show you guys again, unnamed. It was a clearance at Lowe's special, but it's like the most delicate apricot -y peach with bright orange beards that provide such a beautiful pop here, especially contrasted with the sand cherry, which is also blooming. There's actually just a lot of things in this area that are looking so good. I mean, from this vantage point, it's one of my favorite because the path just really invites you back around. We've got that beautiful viburnum at the end with the gazing balls, this clematis, and this, that's a bloomering lilac. We'll go look at closer just framing things so beautifully. I invite you to come explore. And you know, once you get around there, you'll have an expansive view of the water. You can see this clematis. It's a type that, it's a type two pruning group, which typically means it blooms on old and new wood. It, it will probably cover this trellis sometime. I actually would love once we get some of this Hutunia under control, that is just, to plant another clematis here to provide some access. This, this trellis is big enough that I think we could have three, like one, two, three, and maybe work in like a darker flower and like a more bluey flower or something. This is gorgeous. This is one of those you see a lot of different places, but I absolutely love when it's blooming with its beautiful pink stripes. They start out um, this really vibrant color, like this is a fairly new bloom, and then they fade a little bit. Let's see. Here's an example of what they look like as they get a little bit older. Just a little bit more muted, but still delicate and beautiful. And this guy's really got a ton of blooms right now. The Scatatranch is just starting. This is a white one. I actually really like the white. I have the blue in my yard, but this I think has a nice clean flower, which reminds me a little bit of Trillium. We have also these iris. Well, again, a lot of the iris along here were clearance on lows, but I love how streaky this one is. It's really, really pretty. I have an arrowhead viburnum that hasn't started blooming yet, but will be quite a show when it does. I don't know if you see also, I'm sure we'll start, startle them a little when we get there, but we have two baby, these are babies, morning doves, that actually the nest is uh, uh, right around the corner that they they're out of the nest but they're really staying in this area mom and dad have better flight capabilities and are moving around more these guys kind of hang out here they really blend with the rocks they're still right there but there's been a number of times i've been walking and like oh something's moving a rock is moving oh no their nest is we actually don't want it there but it's right up there so it's a pretty nice view and a pretty nice protected area for them to grow up but this blood good Japanese maple we planted last year came back so well with the winter. So we were a little worried about its exposure, though this is a little bit more protected. Didn't skip a beat, so we're hoping in time it fills up this area. And right now, the stunner of this area is this bloomering lilac. It is just covered in blooms, and you guys, the scent is amazing. I don't know how close I'm going to get before they start hopping away. This one in particular is quite small, but and it doesn't have as much sense as the other one. But you can see the lilac is just looking so, so good. I just absolutely love it. Now, this is a dwarf lilac, so I think this isn't too far off its uh, mature size. I want to say it gets four to five feet tall and wide. I'm guessing this is about four feet tall and definitely five feet wide. So it's really the perfect shrub size for around this corner. 
our Amber Jubilee Nine Bark is entering a new color story where it's gone from the bright orange to like a burgundy-esque with chartreuse. This is one of my favorite shrubs. It doesn't, it does have a bloom. You can see it's starting to form. It's kind of boring. So you don't plant it for the blooms. You plant it for the foliage. And you guys, every season, except winter, this looks absolutely amazing. But even in winter, it's kind of interesting because if you look down, it's got some really interesting bark as well, like a paper bark. And I think that's what they're like versus it being sick. But absolutely love this shrub. We have a oak leaf hydrangea here followed by a pink lilac which we're actually considering in the next year moving to a place where it gets a little bit more sun because it doesn't get a ton of sun here uh, when it was a baby it got a lot more but now not so much but the oak leaf hydrangea last year we had almost no blooms on this I can already tell you we're gonna have blooms this year so this is thrilling and though they don't have a ton of blooms they are, this pink lilac, which I don't know what variety it is, has still got some. And it, it also smells really, really good. Unfortunately, most of the blooms are actually our neighbors get to see. Which I guess is not unfortunate. It's fortunate for them. Not so much for us. But this area is really filling out. And we've got more to look at just around the corner. There's two clematis here. One has just opened up. I don't know what this one is called. I think I planted it before I started doing videos and I, this is just not doing it justice because it is oh, so red, but inside like right at the center is more like pink and it is gloriously velvety. So there's this guy. We also have a second clematis here, which hasn't started yet. And I don't remember the variety of that, though I do know it. I did plant that on camera. So I could probably look that guy up. I think I bought it on clearance. Um, and I'm thinking it's probably a little bit lighter to contrast, but loving that as well. Got this crazy viburnum uh, here, which is its disc flowers are in full glory and actually peeking around the corner. You can see we have a variegated Wygelia that is looking so, so beautiful. I'm hoping I can get a look at it from below. I love its pink blooms right now. Peonies are set to pop. One over there. We only have one blooming right now. I am actually going to be back here in two weeks and I'm hoping I can add some peony pictures as well. Maybe do a mini tour of peonies because my parents have quite a number. That's just a little too early for them. The heritage iris is blooming. Um, you can see also the hookahs we planted. The third one that's right, was right over there that I was like, ooh, I don't think this is going to make it, did indeed die. But one is doing extremely well. Another one is definitely holding on. And the one that's doing extremely well, I suspect I'll be able to divide in a year or two. So I'm not going to replace the one that died. I'm just going to wait and we'll fill that area with that type of hookah over time. Now, also in this area, we have, oh, I'll go back and show you. Actually, here's a different vantage point. You can see when the driveway got resaled, we had to move some mulch we hadn't planted yet. So it's back here because it needs to go on these beds. We also have an iris back here. Oh, that is blooming. I wonder how I'm going to be able to show you this. It's a very interesting one. It's like a bright yellow. It's very poorly lit, but bright yellow, smaller flower, uh, which provides this really pretty strappy texture and bright blooms of interest. And I guess now you can see this pink wygelia a lot better. It is absolutely covered and loving life. Also get a really great view of these hosta. I'm not sure what this variety is. It's one that we've had at houses for such a long time. These actually are all divisions of one hosta that I don't think they'll need to be divided this year, but they will in a couple of years. What I like about this one is it's a much more upright hosta. So if you see, it's got like more vase shape naturally which really allows for underplanting, or it's perfect in this kind of space where we have things around a column and other areas as well. So let's just dive further into this bed. So we make our way along this bed. You'll see this did suffer quite some winter damage. We haven't popped in and done pruning on it quite yet, but this is a arborescent hydrangea 
unsure exactly what kind. And once we kind of prune stuff back, it'll end up looking really great. It's got a lot of good basil growth, but we might just have a few less blooms than we normally would. Though we will have some. They'll just be a little bit lower down. And you can see they're already forming up well. We have an old-fashioned salvia that's poking through, and our alliums, you guys, are looking so good. They haven't opened yet. Well, there is one right over there that is the closest. The sweet woodruff is finally done blooming. Uh, I kind of need to come and pull it around this hookera. This is a huge hookera. I'm trying to remember what the variety is. I think it's a mahogany splendor, but it's supposed to get quite large, like 18 inches wide and like 15 inches tall. So I thought it would handle itself and it's definitely doing well. I just want to give it a little bit more breathing room. And the other thing we're kind of combating in this area is the sweet woodruff, when it is done flowering, puts on these. These are all just babies, but did you see all those balls? At the end, they'll get a tiny bit bigger, probably about double the size, and they're Velcro-like burrs. They're not as bad as some burrs, uh, but they stick to our dogs. So we don't really love them. And I'm wondering if we should come in and give this a haircut to kind of get them away. We'll go explore this area from down below, but you guys can see the arbor we put in in a video this week. I just absolutely love it. I think what I love about it is twofold. It provides a pop, a structure from a couple different views. Uh, like uh, one of my favorites is actually down at the bottom. I want to show you guys what it looks like, um, but it's just doing well. And I am pleased, and we'll get down there and look at them in a second, that I think the roses there are leafing out. One thing that is not doing quite well is our rolled doll rose that I think in that same video I told you guys, oh, it was looking pretty rough. Uh, I think it's pretty much dead. I need to reach out, take some pictures and reach out to David Austin and see if they'll replace it next year for us. I'm hopeful that, I, I know their policy is a five-year plant guarantee unless it is something that is not their fault. I, ha I don't know if this is their fault. But I'm hopeful that they will replace it because it really failed to thrive. And as you can see from others in the area, I don't believe it was how we were treating it. Um, so I'm hopeful that they will replace it. But other things that are thriving in this area, we've got this beautiful pinks are doing so, so well. Um, not just here, we can see this big three low growing ones that have their first flush, like kind of down below. And they're already putting up stems for their next one, which looks so good against these hookahs. We also have this bicolored salvia, which is so upright. That is just beginning, and the pollinators love it. The creeping phlox is going out a little bit, but the pin cushion flower is is going. Give it a week, and it will be absolutely covered and looking fantastic. As will these guys. I, I was hoping we'd be open for this tour. They're not quite quite growing along. The most advanced one we have is this guy. This one is the most advanced and it hasn't even really started opening up yet. So I can't wait to see them when they do. Asteria has really leafed out well. I was trying to see the other day if we were going to get any blooms on it. I'm not really seeing any. I was hoping it would, but Maybe I'll be surprised. Could be forming over here. Uh, we'll just have to give it some time and see. Other things in this area, actually some annuals that are going to my house. One change that you'll actually be seeing quite soon if you haven't already is we are gonna pull these blonde lavender out. There's one that is definitely alive, one that's partially alive and one that's definitely dead. So we did pick up some additional lavender we're gonna replace these guys. I'll move the two that have life in them somewhere else. And then this is probably our last shot at lavender in this area. It's the sun has changed a little bit uh, since we did put lavender here. So this will be the last time we do it and hopefully they thrive. If they don't, then we might look into other options. Hosta we planted is doing well. Uh, we actually planted this hosta as well last year. It is doing really well. This is half a hosta, you guys from one at my house. And you can also see it. These are all going back to my house. I 
had them here while I was here. Um, also, I just need to point out really quickly, look how beautiful this view is with the lupins. And this is a Harvest of Memory Iris we planted last year from Shriner. I love the pop of like soft yellow it provides there, as well as the red peony from down below just kind of peeking through, which is just so, so, so pretty. We also have a rose here that I need to get a little closer and it's got some aphid problems. It's also doing a weird thing. I don't really want to climb back there, so I'm wondering if I can... I don't want to climb back there, so I'm wondering if I can show you. Look at that bloom on the left of your screen. It's got some weird spiky flower things going on. Like it's not a typical rosebud. I don't remember this rose doing that before, so I don't know if something else is going on. I also just want to briefly point out that the lily of the valley is blooming. I know this is a very invasive plant in a lot of areas, but the, the little flowers are just so sweet. My mom actually had a lily of the valley in her bridal bouquet. If we look at them closely, they're actually just baiting but they've got these beautiful little bells that are so charming. I think what we might do, my dad and I were talking, and after I get everything cleared out later this year, we might come in with some like, not quite bamboo guard, I don't think it needs to be that deep, but something that is quite deep and kind of create a space for it to be penned in so it doesn't take over this area, which we really the valley can do. I feel like the conditions. We probably started out with maybe a dozen plants right under this step, which we don't mind if they fill out this area. Um, but it's been 13 years and this is as far as they've come. So I don't know if that means they're about to take off or what. So we do want to prevent that. So we're going to come in with some kind of lining to try and keep them contained is the idea we have anyway. Look at this, you guys. <sighs> Doesn't it look just stunning? Okay, there's so much to look at in further detail. This is going to be such a long tour, but I think we can agree needs it. Got another lilac over here blooming. It's an uh, old-fashioned lilac that's got huge panicles. It hasn't really started yet, just swelling, and there's a couple that are opening. This is like a very light pinky lilac that has some beautiful scent. Uh, but if we shift over here... This ground cover, which I don't remember its name, has its, it's like a silvery foliage. It's got white blooms, which are looking so good right now. Our Princess Alexandra of Kent, I might kind of create a little space um, for it, but it's putting on really good growth. And I think give it a year or two and it will be just a solid presence in this area. I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, I think I mentioned in another video with this plant right here, we were playing a, is it a weed or is it a plant game? Because we weren't quite sure. It's a, it's definitely a, a weed that will pull before it goes to seed. But it was in a position that I could see us planting a plant in. Uh, so we left it. So that's a little disappointing. But kind of ironic. I don't know if anyone else ever plays those games. We're like, did I forget what I planted there? Which I've, I've done from time to time. Nope, that's definitely weed. You can also see we have some more lupins down here. Now, these guys, I don't know if you see that panicle. It's kind of hard. These guys are looking a little odd. A little Frankenstein-y, if you will. These are seedlings from lupins at my house, as are those. These, these have all been transferred over. Those are true blue. Beautiful. Absolutely love them. They have tons of babies. We're very happy to let them kind of move around that garden bed and provide that beautiful panicle of color. These guys were also seedlings. And I did at one point have a couple different multicolored lupins. And I think this must be the result of two different colored lupins coming together. I'm interested to see what its full, full bloom looks like. Right now it looks a little strange. A little tie-dye. I, I can't decide if I like it or not. Oh, so we're gonna leave it and see what these other guys are, but. I just wanted to point it out, this is something that can happen if you have different colored lupins a little too close together. You might not be able to trust seedlings that come up in the area. Shifting topics, this peony right here is our first to bloom. 
look at this. It's quite large. Let me just to show you for reference the size of my hand, though it doesn't have a scent, which is actually why it's down here. It's something we love to see, but we want the ones that smell good right up there. But it's still so beautiful. Red's one of my mom's favorite colors, so we kind of put pops of it here and there. And this is a particularly pretty red because uh, it's like a very rich, saturated one that is looking so, so good. I even like the yellow stamens. Um, it provides a lot of interest. And it's always the first to bloom, which is exciting to watch. We'll go look at this from the front because it looks so much better from the front. But this is a Bridal Veil Spirea. I'll be able to show you more up close what their blooms like from here than I will in the front. Though the front gets more sun, so it's got that beautiful flowing habit that you can kind of see right here, this arch, which is what the Bridal Veil Spirea are known for. This side doesn't get nearly as much sun as the other side, but look, look at this. Now their, their flowers in and of themselves aren't, they're beautiful, but they're not like anything to write home of, but this, this habit is just gorgeous. So we'll go around and you can kind of just see it. Look at it. Look at it. We're actually also thinking about shifting this clump next year. Uh, Cause there's three plants in here that this one on the end is doing the best. And these other two are a little crowded and don't really have the space to reach their full maturity. So we're thinking about shifting them next year down along the property line where they can have that, that space to move. Something we're gonna think about for a little bit, but right now we're gonna enjoy this view. The house, the brand new arbor, and the beautiful spire, and our another one of our Irish, Shriner Iris blooming. Look at this guy. He opened up yesterday. Uh, I was so excited to be able to share him with you. He's an extra ruffling one, which look at these edges. They're just so pretty and contrasted with the bright orange beard and the white of the standards. Oh, loving him. He's blooming. Uh, these I think are babies we didn't quite pull out, so I'm gonna pull them out and move them to with their compatriots. This is a Shriner Iris that thrived, but doesn't appear to be putting on a bloom stock for the year. That's okay. Another one thrived, not putting on a bloom stock for the year either. Here is one that died out that we replaced. And I think the one we replaced it with is doing well. So that's exciting. And then this guy, supposed to be a late bloomer, but He's blooming right now. He hasn't opened up yet. Hopefully he will while I'm here. I don't know. I think he'll be blooming tomorrow when I'm gone. But I can already tell from the color he's going to be a pretty one. Over here, we don't have a lot to show you, but I did want to point out that this Shriner Iris survived as well and is putting up a bloom stock. That's a black variety. I think it might be Raven Girl. I really need to come in. I want to put out labels this year for all the Iris we planted that we know the names of so we can know right away what they are. Uh, but he's looking good. I also wanted to point out that the Black Eyed Seasons I got from work died back, which I thought they would last year. They really didn't handle the shock well, but I did notice I got a little columbine that piggybacked off one of them. But I'm going to let populate this area. I don't know which it is. We have two beautiful kinds of columbine at work, and I am happy with either. So we're just going to let them go. Got some weeding to do right here, but you can see the hibiscus. This is a bright red hibiscus that's been here for a number of years, just doing well, as is the red hot pokers. Um, so, everything is looking stunning. This, I wish you guys could smell it. Miss Kim Standard. It actually moved from our old house. I'm trying to remember how long it's been in here. Probably about 12 years, and a couple years ago we did, it was rounded. Uh, and it went so low that you didn't see it was a standard, didn't see some of that structure. So a couple of years ago, my dad did prune it up and it is love. This is the first year that it's looking so good, so good. And it smells amazing. Miss Kim Lilac is not my actually favorite lilac because I think the blooms are a little small compared to some of the older varieties, but oh, it's a late bloomer. It's just, it smells so good. So, so good. The pollinators are over it. Oh, I wish you could smell it, but I think we can agree. 
but it's looking fantastic. Also looking fantastic is this lupin we planted in a recent video. This is a red rum lupin. I absolutely love this color. I hope it goes everywhere. I really would love it too. I think it's amazing. Also, this, it's fallen over. This is the um, Speeding Again Iris we bought and planted in a recent video. Look at that. I wish I could get in there easily. I can't. Um, to show you, these are huge. I want to say that they're probably five to six inches from top to bottom. And it's just a beautiful color. It's very top heavy. I think what we might need to do in the future is provide a little bit of support for them. But man, man, oh man, oh man, it's looking good. Some of the dahlias we planted are beginning. There's a couple just poking through. The ones we planted up there are looking a lot better. They're all up. Um, and then these guys haven't really done anything yet. We have an older variety of iris. I don't know what those are. Those have been here for a long time. A little smaller, a little prettier blue, a pretty pastel -y blue, almost periwinkle. That reminds me of sweet peas, that color. It's looking good. Well, this is interesting. My dad wondered if those were weeds and I thought they were borage. Looking at it, I'd say he was right and they're weeds, but we might end up pulling those out. We planted this spirea last year. It lived in its tan for maybe a decade. So glad to see it survive. We also have one of the sea holly glitter orangium right there that I planted that's putting up a bloom stock. And this heliopsis, or coreopsis, heliopsis? Coreopsis. I always get them confused. This is either heliopsis or coreopsis. And there's some stuff we planted up there that if these aren't, that are the opposite. I think this is a coreopsis. It's a bright yellow one that we moved not too long ago from my house. Bounced. It's going to do so well in this area. The vegetable garden, I'm not really going to spend a ton of time looking at it because I'm actually mid-finishing a video that you will have already seen that I gave a tour of that, so I will link that here. Oh, that you can see. It's looking great. And actually, it's uh, it will be completely planted out as soon as I finish this. I have to put some bush beans in, which you'll have already seen. And that's the last thing for this to be planted at. Uh, just kind of not a lot going on, but this is a really pretty view. And I do have to show you, look at our stunning mushrooms. We have to get in there and pull them out. But look at the size of these guys. Right there in particular, that is probably about seven or eight inches diameter. It's amazing how they just pop up at times. Uh, and you have another really pretty view of the iris. Actually, this is probably going to be my thumbnail. This is gorgeous with the rum red lupin, the speeding again, the lilac, the Bridalville spray in the house. Ugh, one of my favorite seasons is June. Uh, the only thing in this bed that isn't doing super well is this potentilla. I don't like potentillas. My dad does. He's probably going to want to keep it, but I would like to see it gone. Rhubarb. Looking good. We've got some weeding to do. I don't know. Oh, we did get some blueberries. That's good. I wasn't sure if these got fertilized. This is actually the one we moved from my house. I don't know if these guys got enough water uh, to produce a ton of flowers, but we'll have to kind of keep an eye on them. But I'm really excited to see these. It's got a lot of blueberries on it. We'll just have to watch them. Make sure we get our share. This also has some flowers on it that I'd noticed. And I'm just hoping that it produces. I do want to show you a couple exciting things in this bed. So I kind of refer to these as the lilac tree bed with the lilac tree, the Bridalville Spirea bed, and then the Miss Kim lilac bed because these three are all Miss Kim lilacs. Last year, um, towards the end of the year, we actually moved these two Miss Kim lilacs. They were can kind of see this like concave they were all planted right here getting huge growing together in a way that they were starting to die out in the middle so we decided to expand this bed which we did made it a lot wider and separate them we are going to be doing a rejuvenation prune after they bloom lilacs start forming their buds as soon as they're done blooming so if you want to prune them but don't want to miss a year of blooms the time to do that is after they bloom. So I'm really glad that we didn't do it early because my dad was like, well, how much are they really going to bloom if they've been stressed, blah, blah, blah. 
a lot is the answer. I, I'll show you from the other side, but they are just covered right at the tippy tops in blooms. So that is thrilling. What we're going to do is let them bloom and then we're going to take them back by a third, um, which we're hoping will encourage some basil growth, some more down by the middle. You can see this one in particular already has put out some new growth in the middle. That's what we want to see. As we take it back from a third, it'll probably be about there. So it'll make it more normal and hopefully encourage to bush out a little bit more. This is this one's worst side because this is where all the other lilacs were um, when they were bushed together. But you can also see it's got some basal growth too that I, I do think will respond well to that one third cutback. We're planning on doing one third cutback this year and next year, maybe the year after that as well, just until we get the shape that we like or at least they look a little bit more normal. But I did want to point out while I was over here, our Midnight Masquerade Penstemon. We have three, one, two, three, are going to be blooming in the next week or two. I'm hoping that I am here when they do, because I can't wait to see it. I love the slightly purple tinge some of their leaves have, and the blooms are a lighter purple, which I think will be so pretty in this area. Also, the Russian Sage, these are denim and lace Russian Sage. They're all coming back. These two are stronger. We've got one right here, one right here, two, three, four, four Russian Sage and interspersed amongst them. There are hibiscus. We've got one right here. This, so this hibiscus and that hibiscus are the same. We've got another variety right here that gets a little bit taller. And I'm really glad to see them come back so well. It's clear that this side, oh, this is open. Shouldn't be, but I will step in. Um, it's clear that this side does not get as much sun as that, which we knew when we planted it. Um, it's protected from morning sun by the trees behind me. It'll get a shot right here, be protected a tiny bit, but I'm not... I don't remember where the position is. I think it's about there. So it might get a little bit of filtered light, but then it gets a really good shot in the evening. Uh, so it does get six hours, but it's probably only about six hours. And those guys get more. They probably get more like eight or nine. But you can see it's still doing well. I'm still pleased with it and can't wait to see how this area fills out. Over here, we have two different kinds of echinacea we planted. These two are the same and this one's a little bit different. I thought this one in the middle had died out because it got eaten back quite badly by deer. Uh, but I'm really thrilled to see it come back. And this is another Shriner Iris that came back strong but doesn't seem to have any bloom stalks for the year. I don't remember what his name is. If he's a black iris and it's Mr. something. These labels would be so helpful. But I'm, I, oh, the other thing to point out is this peony, we moved it. Uh, this year, I don't know if it has any buds. I actually meant to go pull them off if there are any um, so that it can focus on root growth this year. It's not surprising after transplanting peonies that they might take a little while to bloom. Um, but this guy, got, we got quite a root ball, so I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't take quite as long as some to bounce. As we walk up here, I do want to briefly point out our hawthorn it's kind of hard to see from further away but look look at all the beautiful blooms oh i love hawthorns they are just so pretty and this is one that's got it's kind of hard to see because of the lighting but look look at it it's in shade right now but he has so many blooms on him i wonder if i show you from this angle if he looks a little uh, it's hard to see because they're at the top and I'm shooting it from below, but he's covered. Uh, not a lot to show here. I will point out this sand cherry we planted last year that also lived in its can for quite some time. He's blooming, doing really well. These spireas we all planted, doing really well. Excited to see them grow. Our evening primrose are doing great. We're still fighting the hutunia battle. Some days it feels like it'll be a lifelong battle. What we are doing, we've done a number of things in this area. I'll link some videos where we kind of talked about it a little bit more. We have put down landscape fabric. Um, not in this bed because there wasn't any, but up there 
it has prevented probably about 95% of the hutunia from coming through. You can see right here, there's a number of them. We didn't put down any in here because it wasn't in this bed. I think all of the hutunia you see coming through are probably a reaction to us trying to kill it. Uh, but 95% of the hutunia definitely was slowed down by the landscape fabric. You can see around the edges, it wasn't as deterred, which is kind of to be expected. They found a way around it. What we have been doing once a week that we're gonna do all year and potentially all next year is spraying with Roundup. We try not to use a, um, a lot of harsher chemicals in our yard. Roundup is one that we only use sparingly. I truly believe it is the only thing that will help us eradicate this hutunia. It is one of the most invasive plants I've ever, ever encountered. It is beautiful, but it just chokes everything out. It is not worth it, in my opinion. Um, so the we are, my dad once a week is going around in spring. You can see he sprayed a couple of days ago and it's slowly dying. Hopefully what that Roundup do does is take it back to the root and kill the root. This stuff is voracious, so... Like I said, we anticipate having needing to do this for about a year, maybe two. We're also contemplating some things like that grass. We're probably going to dig up and pull all the hutunia out by hand because we'd like to save the grass. But it's just all, it's riddled in it and we don't want to leave a source. Uh, you can see at the base of this tree, there is also some hutunia plants. What we are doing there is, um, rather than spray... My dad will either take the dispenser and just kind of touch each leaf with it or he'll put on really thick gloves and have it on his fingers and just kind of run it up the individual plants, uh, putting something between the bark of the tree and it so that it doesn't affect the plants we want to keep. Oh, it's a little, a little disconcerting, but it is what it is. But I am standing right next to the arbor, and I wanted to give you an update. These guys were planted about a week ago, uh, and this one is not looking as good as the other one. However, I do think it might bounce. I am encouraged by the green in the stems. This is feeling a little... This one I think might survive. This one I'm not sure about. This one I think will survive. Hopefully it's enough that it'll just can give it some energy to survive and we'll see how it does this one on the other side definitely doing well definitely doing well look at this leaves it's leafed out in multiple areas this is one that we knew would be doing better and i think this one is going to be just fine and i'm so excited hopefully the other one bounces as well give you a view of this bed from down below. This is a mock orange that is covered in buds. I'm hopeful that it will be a, quite the show this year. Okay, let us walk up this way and we'll kind of show you a little bit more about a project my dad is working on. I should also, when I'm talking about hutunia, you can see it down there. It's also known as chameleon flower uh, and it's got really pretty variegation. Puts on a white bud and in some in more sun it will add red to its variegation again not worth it but this this bed is also riddled in with some tiger lilies ditch lilies uh that in the fall we're going to actually dig these all out dig these all out try and kill the hutunia i'm probably going to throw these guys away um and I, we have a couple of pots that have no hutunia in them and we might start over with bamboo guard because the other thing is these guys spread quite a lot. Uh, and we'd like some opportunity for a couple different things in this area and a more contained tiger lily presence. Also known as ditch lilies. Actually, don't know if you see this one right here has climbed up the rock wall and is putting up a bloom stalk. So pretty, but again, voracious. Okay, let's talk about this project. So this is a dust path that we've dealt with a little bit of erosion. It's one of our main thoroughfares for the four-wheeler, which we use to kind of get supplies to the bottom of the driveway. And my dad has done a lot of math and figured out 
how we're kind of doing a series of low steps that'll each be about four inches. But we're gonna come and backfill eventually with some crushed stone of some sort up there, as well as these guys. We could just stone this whole path, but this is mostly to help keep the stones from just being driven down this whole section. I think over time, if we didn't have these steps in check, they would just continue going down the hill with gravity and us walking and things. Because even though we're walking back up, it doesn't have the push down the hill that it might. So this will help keep it in place. This will help stop the erosion in this area and rain runoff. And these about are 22 inches deep. He's got four by sixes that are the steps. Uh, and what it does is kind of create this very gentle slope down this area. So he's been putting these in. He's fitting them along the rocks and putting rebar down into each of these to kind of keep them in place. So that's looking good. The other things that are looking so good in this area is our ferns over here are looking lush. These Japanese anemone we put in here are also coming back slowly. Uh, and the ferns we planted over here are looking gorgeous as well. I did want to point out this bloom on the Mighty Chocolate Cherry Estilbe that we planted. It's beginning to open up and it's such a bright red that I can't wait for all of it to open up and look so good in this area. I also forgot I put in a still be here. Didn't overwinter all that well, but it's putting up a balloon stalk and it has one leaf. So hopefully over time, it will kind of keep filling out this space. Sorgosa rose that we took out of my yard is definitely going to survive. It hasn't, I don't think, been nibbled on. Knock on wood chips. Uh, yet by the deer. Oh, maybe that might have been eaten. But we're going to just see how it does in this area without protection. See how it does in the light requirements. This is a little shaded for it. Uh, but it's an experiment. We might end up shifting it somewhere else if we don't think it does well or need some additional protection. Okay, I do want to spend some time just briefly kind of talking about this bed. It is going through a little bit of a transition right now. You can see that the Brennera is on the way out. What these things do is... Their bloom stalks, the leaves, have the same pattern as their bigger ones, but they're a lot smaller. It's got that beautiful iridescence. And these, again, are just blooming out. Usually there's more. As the bloom stalks fade, the leaves below become a lot bigger. And then once they're completely gone, I'll actually come in and cut these back. And it'll be this pretty wild mound of silvery flowers. Every once in a while, you'll see one like this hasn't really started yet. I'm going to leave that. Just put that guy out but it'll still be really pleasing so it won't be as flopped around then as i said it's going through a tiny bit of a transition so the the spring beauties are ending and actually what's funny is i was talking to my dad the other day i planted this bleeding heart and i marked it and i was like oh my gosh dad there's another bleeding heart i'm pretty sure i planted this two years ago did not come back last year so I replaced it and now it's back. Didn't bloom this year, but you know, I'll take it. So I don't even remember what color it is, but I would love a bleeding heart there. Um, what I like about bleeding hearts is they come up in the spring, they add these beautiful, this one's white, like delicate flowers, and then they fade away and let other things take center stage. With the Ligularia that'll be putting up bloom stock soon, but I just love the leaf texture. And I don't know if you can see, but it is huge, huge. So it likes this spot too. We have a huge be here. I don't remember what this is. It might be a mighty pip. Not 100% sure, but it's got bloom stalks all over the place. Um, these are actually going to be going somewhere else, but just loving, loving how this is all turning out. And you can kind of see here too, the difference in leaf size a little bit better. And these guys, will con the leaves will continue to grow all summer. This bleeding heart, I'm actually probably going to come in and take away some of this side that's already faded to give this Mighty Chocolate Cherry a still be a little bit more room. It's putting up bloom stalks and looking great. We actually have a Mighty Pip Pink a still be that we're still trying to figure out where we want it to go, but 
this might be an option. We took one of the, we're going to take the ferns out of this area. I don't know if I mentioned that in this video. We were kind of looking at it and we started out with probably three from the clearance section at Lowe's over there. So that's where we started this tour. So if you think about it, all of those ferns, all of these ferns, all the ferns down the side started with three containers. We love it. We love the lushness, but we don't know if we love it in this bed. And considering how they spread, we'd rather let the other textures we've developed in here go. So we're going to be pulling these before they can really establish and we'll move them to other areas. We're probably going to pop a couple more down here. So I'm going to take a couple to my house. Some of our neighbors have expressed an interest in some when we asked if they wanted any. So we're going to we're going to pull them out of this area and really just let other shade textures live and be celebrated here. We have another rhododendron here that is just beginning to flower. This guy took on a lot of winter damage again. Um, so don't know how his future will kind of hold out here, but he's got four blooms. One, two, three are open. One is still bud form right here and we're going to enjoy them while they are here as well as all the different textures this bed brings okay i do want to quickly go show you the new addition here uh as well as give you an update on a couple different items first as i'm walking over let's talk about this awful looking tree this is a dogwood i think it's just a kusa dogwood um, and in all honesty, these top branches are the best this tree has ever looked. However, don't know if you can see it. This is not deer damage. This is just, it might be winter burn, but this tree has been here for five or six years, has never flowered once, and each year has dead. So... We're probably not going to kill them. We're probably going to go find a spot like in the background to just let them live. But we are going to replace him probably with another dogwood. Um, he was $30 from a tractor supply company bought on impulse. So we're probably going to spend a little bit more than $30 and go to a nursery with a plant guarantee. Uh, though, again, these leaves look really, really healthy. And I think Kusa dogwoods generally get about 20 feet tall. So long term, this wouldn't if we cut all these up, this wouldn't be the end of the world for the where the branches start in terms of height, but it just looks pretty awful right now when he's not that tall. Our hollies we moved are doing really well. They're putting on new growth. And I think I said when we planted them and they were having a hard time seeing them against the green, that they would be a little, look a lot more distinguished once the blue spurs put on their new growth and you can totally see that they're also covered um with flowers that have just finished so i'm hopeful that they'll have lots of berries for us to enjoy and i wanted to walk up here and talk about these two things this variegated willow it's a globe willow that we planted last year we transplanted it it definitely has been eaten by deer uh, down below, but it is definitely established and thriving and we're okay with that. This guy can get 20 feet, five feet tall. So we actually kind of like a little bit more visibility down at the bottom or an opportunity to add some more lower growing things here. And the beauty in this willow is the variegation it puts out a new growth this time of year. They kind of start out this color, which has got like a pinky tinge to them. And it's highly variegated. So it goes to like this white. And it just provides such a glow in this shaded spot that we love. And we've added something new here. The elderberry bush finally moved from my house. This is where he is. He is looking a little bit sad um, for a couple of reasons. One, his foliage did get a tiny bit damaged in transportation, but all the flowers are just going out of bloom. They did so well. He's got this beautiful 
tree-like form, even though elderberries are typically more bush. He looks great there. I wish you could see he's not showing up on camera like he is in real life, but he looks fantastic. And he provides a lot, uh, another screen and privacy factor between us and our neighbors. I think once he gets established, as we're watering him really well in, especially through some of the hot days they've had, not quite as warm as, as I was talking about in the city, but still getting into the 80s, which is unseasonable for up here this time of year, giving him lots of, lots of water as he seeks to establish. And I think he will make it. He was nibbled on once by deer, but then they left him alone. So we're hopeful that that means he's not going to need any protection, which is what we intended for in this area. Uh, also, the um, other Hollywood bush we planted is right here, doing really, really well. I think over time these get about five feet tall and wide, so that will also provide a pretty evergreen mound in this area as well. So that's actually going to end this June garden tour. It's early June. There's still a lot of time left in the growing season. I hope you enjoyed seeing all the beautiful things. I can't wait for the peonies to bloom. I think they're kind of the next big thing. After the peonies, we'll be waiting for the uh, hydrangea to bloom and the coneflowers. One of the things I love about a perennial garden is the fact that they take turns in what's on show and what's providing the interest and it can change from time to time. I mean, just look at the backyard where we were showing you not that long ago, the hellebores and the creeping flocks that were looking so good and the crocus. And now we're saying, oh, look at the hosta coming into their own, which were completely dormant. Or look at the beautiful iris and look at this and that. And next there'll be something else taking its place so that's the thing that we're going to be doing a lot in the yard this year as i find plants as needed we're probably not going to add quite as many plants this year though i do have a garden center problem where i go and i'm like oh that's really cool where where can i sneak that um and we're trying to be a little bit more discerning assessing areas for um what time of year we need something to show in that area or what we want the purpose of an area to be like for instance the blueberry bed in that lower section, there's not a lot blooming right now. Um, but that's the intention. It's going to be blueberry beds. We don't want to plant anything there because those blueberry plants will get large eventually. And actually, they'll probably look nice and full once they're more established and more bush-like. I hope you really enjoyed this. Next up, we're going to be heading to the city. You're going to see some videos that I already actually started this week. Uh, that I'll be finishing up when I get home and posting where we get our vegetable garden in, which is thrilling. We also have a lot of flower seedlings that need to go out. And then we'll also be doing a June garden tour there as well. Things are looking a little bit crispy in the city because it's been over 90 for like mm, 10 ish days and we haven't had rain since the beginning of May. It's been the second driest May on record where I am, uh, only second to the season in 1917 known as the Dust Bowl. Uh, which is, I hope, not a sign of the whole summer. <laughs> it's supposed to be cooling down this week, so I'll be able to spend a little bit more time outside and not only give you, finish those videos up, but then give you a tour of that space as well. Because this channel, in case you didn't know or you're new here, we have two different gardens that we follow. The cottage garden, where I am right now, as well as the city garden, which is where I live, uh, which is an urban setting. I have a 6,300 square foot lot, including my house. Uh, I really jam pack that space uh, full of different things, not only for um, landscaping, but also vegetable production, cutting flowers, and making the most of what I have. So if you liked this video, please make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can follow along not only here at the Cottage Garden, but at the City Garden as well. Uh, and hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment as well, letting me know what was your favorite part of the tour or something that you'd like to know a little bit more about. So I really appreciate you joining me today and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.